everyone! In today's video, we'll be looking at some older decor trends that can make your home look dated. We'll of course also look at some quick and inexpensive ways to fix these things that you can easily do yourself. Also, if you're thinking about listing your place to sell it and you need to prioritize updating certain things but you don't have the budget to do everything, these are some of the top contenders that I'd suggest updating so that hopefully you can get a better sale price. Speaking of sale prices, a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Karma. I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for deals online when I shop. For example, my kettle just broke, so I was obviously devastated when I realized that I had to now buy the one that I've been wanting for the past six months. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty pricey kettle though. So I used Karma, which found me a coupon to get it for an extra 10% off. Karma is a free app and Chrome extension that I've actually been using for years. They have literally saved me thousands of dollars. Here's how Karma works. When you're shopping online, it helps you save items from all your favorite stores and it notifies you when they go on sale. Then you can organize all your saved items into handy wish lists. I have wish lists for all my favorite stores, but you can organize them however you like. When you're ready to check out, Karma also finds and applies the best coupon for you while even giving you cash back. I love Karma and I highly recommend you grab it for free through the link in my description below. Thanks again, Karma, for supporting this channel and for helping us all save money. Okay, back to the video. The first thing that's dating your home that I wanna talk about is faux wood paneling. Faux paneling has got to be one of the biggest giveaways that a home is still chilling in the 70s. I know the 70s are making a big comeback in the design world, but faux paneling is not one of the things that is coming back. Even if you like the look of wood on your walls, unfortunately the old wood panels just don't look like the real thing. They're usually quite flat and they have that giveaway like faux panel sheen to them. Obviously tearing out paneling is not for everyone and it's not always possible, so my recommendation is to just paint it. If you are into the shiplap look, just paint over it exactly as it is. If you want to mimic the look of drywall, you'll have to do a little bit more work in that you'll have to fill each gap between the panels with some spackling. But the most crucial thing with painting faux wood paneling is that you need to use the right kind of paint, otherwise it's going to peel off or scratch off really easily. You can check my video about how to paint laminate to see how to do that. I've linked it down below. Glass blocks. Some designers will tell you glass blocks are 80s and they should stay there, and many others will argue that they're timeless. And I agree, there's glass blocks and there's glass blocks. In the right style of home and setting, I think that glass blocks can actually be magnificent. But the more common glass block that most people react to is the 80s, 90s type. So how do you address the glass block? Let's say you've got it in the bathroom. If you've also got dated doors, dated paint, dated vanities, dated light fixtures, and dated flooring, then yes, those glass blocks are just gonna be screaming dated as well. And they're gonna be a lot more offensive. It's difficult and costly to remove them though. So my suggestion would be to try and update any of the dated surroundings first that are a little bit easier to tackle. If you can make the surroundings of dated glass blocks look bright and fresh, I think they won't stand out quite so much. Depending on where you've got your glass blocks, you can also disguise them with a sheer curtain. You can paint a dark trim around them to make them more of an intentional feature. Or if you're brave and you love color, you could even paint them with a special glass paint. Tiled drop ceilings. The tiled drop ceiling consists of interlocking tiles suspended on a metal grid. In residential settings, they're typically found in basements, but unfortunately, some builders in the past thought it would be a great idea to put them in the main living spaces as well. Tiled drop ceilings, for me, give off like old school travel agency vibes. Not exactly the look that any of us want. <laughs> Tiled drop ceilings are meant to hide, but still allow access to all the various guts of the home, like wiring, insulation, plumbing, things like that. And sometimes they're installed just to cover damaged or unsightly ceilings that previous owners just weren't able to tackle fixing. Tiled drop ceilings can be removed pretty easily, but the extent of work required to refinish the situation hiding underneath them will depend, of course, entirely on your home's individual situation. Removing it could be a can of worms. If you've had a look and removing your drop ceiling is out of the question, then there's a few things that you can do to try to improve the look. You could paint everything the same uniform color, or you could cover each individual panel with wallpaper, or my favorite solution is probably to fake the look of a coffered ceiling. You can do this by buying grid covers, which are like moldings that snap onto the existing metal grid. Finally, you can also, of course, swap out the old panels with newer, more modern ones. If having a tiled drop ceiling is an inescapable necessity in your home, don't give up hope because there are better looking options out there. Popcorn ceilings. 
If we're gonna talk about dated ceilings, then we can't just pretend like popcorn ceilings don't exist. Popcorn ceilings used to be all the rage because A, they were inexpensive, B, they covered up flaws in ceilings, and C, they were good for noise reduction. Heavily popcorn ceilings can definitely make your home look dated. So what if you're stuck with a popcorn ceiling? Can you remove it yourself? We've all seen those super satisfying DIYs of people just scraping off their entire popcorn ceiling in one swift movement, right? Not to be a negative Nelly, but removing popcorn ceilings is messy, difficult, and labor intensive. If you're ready to take on this job yourself, then I definitely urge you to find out if your place has asbestos before even thinking about starting. You do have another option with popcorn ceilings and that's to just cover this whole ceiling with planks. You will lose an inch or two of ceiling height once it's all done, but this could be an option if you're not able to scrape off what you have. Wallpaper borders. Just because wallpaper has made a comeback, that doesn't mean that you should leave your ivy wallpaper border up. No. If you've got a wallpaper border, it has got to go. Wallpaper borders were once used to add a decorative touch to a room, but all they're doing now is dating your home. If removing the wallpaper border presents a massive can of worms because of reasons, you can just paint over it or hide it by adding some molding over top. Gigantic mirrored surfaces. Large mirrored surfaces usually tend to look pretty dated. Namely, mirrored closets, mirrored walls in main living spaces, and sometimes huge sheet mirrors in the bathroom can look dated as well. The idea behind this trend was to create the illusion of more space and to reflect more light, which is totally valid, but it has the drawback of also creating a lot of visual chaos. If you like your mirrored wall, then you should keep it, but I personally think that mirrors look best contained in some kind of frame. If you dislike your mirrored wall, but you can't remove it, you could try using thin wood strips or pieces of molding to create a grid look to break it up. If you have a dated mirrored closet, consider replacing the mirrored doors with simple paneled doors. And for large sheet mirrors and old bathrooms that are too annoying to be removed, I recommend just DIYing a simple frame around the existing mirror. For those of you who have been around a couple of years on the channel, you might remember that I did this in my old rental bathroom by adding a piece of removable thin molding around the edge of the mirror. You can see that bathroom makeover if you go and look back through my older videos. I also did it more recently in my mom's bathroom makeover, which I actually only shared on Instagram. Here's a quick before and after picture. Dated track lighting. Track lighting is a pretty popular option for lighting up certain areas in the home, but you can spot old track lighting from a mile away. If you're happy with the amount of light that your track lighting is providing, but you've got one of the older fixtures from the 90s or the early 2000s, then consider swapping them out with a bit of a more contemporary fixture. There are some really chic and modern options available now that will definitely bring your space more up to date, at least for another five or 10 years. Over elaborate curtains. Curtains can be a tough one. They're generally not cheap to buy if you want decent ones, so I can understand the reluctance to let go of a set of curtains that you spent a lot of money on in the past. But curtains are one of those things that can really date your home if they're too fussy or over elaborate. The areas where a lot of dated frilliness can be concentrated is often in balances. I highly recommend replacing them with something a little more clean and streamlined. Or if your fabric has large dated florals, think like cabbage rose chintz, it may be time for an update. The first question I actually always ask with curtains is, does your room even really need them? It may be that you can just remove them entirely. Maybe you already have the privacy you need. Maybe it's a room that doesn't need light control. Maybe you've had curtains in there so long that you just got used to the fact that that room has curtains. So always just ask that question. For me, the ideal curtains will have lots of nice, thick, even folds. They'll have maybe a classic pinch pleat and they'll melt into the rest of the decor, but they'll still add that extra layer of coziness to the room. The color of the panels might be very similar to the surrounding wall color, and they might have a light, like linen-like texture. Very likely they'll be a solid color, or if there's a pattern, it'll be pretty subdued, and they'll be hung with clean, quiet hardware. Definitely don't use crazy thick curtain rods with scrolls or giant glass finials or things like that. The color of the hardware will depend on the rest of your decor and unfortunately that will also change pretty rapidly with trends. So for hardware, just use whatever you like best and whatever works best with the rest of your decor. If you need more tips on how to hang curtains properly, watch this video I did. Vertical blinds. And now for some more dated window coverings. Vertical blinds. 
Vertical blinds are typically seen in front of sliding glass doors, but they're used on regular windows as well. And they were pretty popular in the past, but they definitely seem pretty dated now. And honestly, they're just kind of a big buzzkill for a room. If you want to update them, it is possible to use the existing hardware and you can replace the vertical panels with something else like curtains or fabric panels. But I think if you're able to, a better look would be to frame the entire window like properly with a curtain rod and correctly hung curtains. Some things in the home definitely age better and more slowly than others, but truthfully, pretty much anything you do in your home will seem outdated sooner or later. Just remember that if you always do what you love, you'll be sure to always love your home, regardless of trends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to download Karma. Bye.